Welcome to the installation video series of Hoi Miles Hybrid Inverter and DTS. This video consists of five chapters, preparation, overview, inverter, monitoring, electrical wiring, commissioning, and DTS network configuration. You can refer to the user manual if you need more information. Please note that only those who have been properly trained and demonstrate relevant skills can install and maintain this hybrid inverter under instructions. Now, let's take a look at what you need to prepare before installation. The following tools and materials are recommended in the installation process. Personal protective equipment should be worn when operating the equipment. And please check whether the hybrid inverter accessories are complete. Before we start, let's take a look at the ports on the hybrid inverter so that you can better understand the installation process. On the left side of the HIT, there's a switch. On the right side of the HIT, there is a ground hole. Below the HIT, from left to right, DC positive and negative input ports, battery positive and negative connection ports, the communication port 1 and 2, generator connector, EPS connector, grid connector, and DTS area. Now, we are ready to go. Please choose the appropriate installation location according to local regulations and actual installation conditions. Please make sure that the hybrid inverter is installed vertically or is tilted, no more than 15. Leave enough space around the inverter. First, mark the four drilling spots according to the screw holes on the bracket. Drill holes with an electric drill with a diameter of 10 mm and a drilling depth of 80 mm. Then plug and secure the anchor in the holes. Hammer the expansion screws into the holes and tighten them. After they are secured in the holes, unscrew the screws while leaving sleeves in place. Fix the wall bracket. Please make sure that the bracket is firmly secured to the mounting surface. Use a T25 screwdriver to unscrew the two screws at the bottom of the inverter and remove the wiring box cover. Next, mount the inverter on the bracket carefully. Tighten the screw to secure the bracket and the inverter. Next we make the electrical connection of HIT. Before electrical connections, make sure you have all the cables you need for installation. They are ground cable, PV cable, grid, EPS, generator cable, communication 1 cable, and communication 2 cable. Now, we can move on to electrical wiring. First, prepare a ground wire as needed, and then strip the insulation layer of the wire to a length that is 2 3 longer than the barrel of the terminal. Then insert the wire into the terminal, and crimp it tightly with the ground terminal crimper. Then fix the cable to the PE port with them 5 screws. First, strip the PV cable insulation by 12 mm. Then, unscrew the cable gland counterclockwise, remove the rubber plug from the waterproof structure. Pass the PV cable through the cable gland. Route the positive and negative wires through the PV1 and PV2 ports, respectively. Then pass through the magnetic ring.
Lifting the lock clip on the PV terminals. Then insert the cable into the correct positions. Press the lock clip downward to secure the connection and tighten the cable gland. If fewer than four components are connected, leave the corresponding positive and negative terminals empty. Next, let's start the battery wiring connection. Use wire strippers to remove the insulation from the battery cable to the appropriate length. Wrap two battery cables around the magnetic ring once, and then pass them through the magnetic ring. Then, screw the cable gland counterclockwise. and loosen the bolts on the battery terminals. Then pass through the cable gland. Connect the red positive and black negative wires to the bat positive and bat negative terminals on the HIT, respectively. And secure the cables using the bolts. Finally, tighten the cable gland. Connect the positive and negative cables of HIT and battery to the string combiner box separately. Now, let's start the AC wiring. The AC side wiring includes connections for the grid, EPS, and generator terminals. The types of cables used by the three are the same. First, use wire strippers to adjust the L1, L2, L3, N, and PE wires to the appropriate length. The colors for L1, L2, L3, N, and PE are brown, black, gray, blue, and yellow-green, respectively. Next, unscrew the cable gland counterclockwise. Remove the rubber plug. Firstly, for the grid cable. Pass the grid cable through the cable gland, then root through the grid interface at the bottom. Wrap PE cable around the magnetic ring once, and then pass them through the magnetic ring. Fix the PE wire onto the grounding bar with them 6 bolts.
Wrap L1, L2, L3 in cables around the magnetic ring once and then pass them through the magnetic ring. Lifting the lock clip on the AC terminals. Then insert the cable into the correct positions. Press the lock clip downward to secure the connection. and tighten the cable gland. Then for the EPS cable, pass the EPS cable through the cable gland. Then route through the EPS interface at the bottom. Wrap L1, L2, L3 in cables around the magnetic ring once and then pass them through the magnetic ring. Lifting the lock clip on the AC terminals. Then insert the cable into the correct positions. Press the lock clip downward to secure the connection. And tighten the cable gland. Last, for the generator cable. Pass the generator cable through the cable gland. Then route through the generator interface at the bottom. Fix the PE wire onto the grounding bar with them 6 bolts. Lifting the lock clip on the AC terminals. Then insert the cable into the correct positions. Press the lock clip downward to secure the connection. And tighten the cable gland. Next, we're ready to start the communication wiring. Strip the insulation of the communication cable with an Ethernet wire stripper and lead the corresponding signal cables out. Insert the stripped communication cable into the RJ45 plug in the correct order and crimp it with the network cable crimper. Next, unscrew the cable gland and waterproof structure counterclockwise and remove the rubber plug from the waterproof structure. Pass the cable through the cable gland and waterproof structure. Then route it through the communication one port and insert the RJ45 connector into the corresponding terminal. A click sound indicates proper insertion. Finally, tighten the cable gland. Place the junction box cover back into position. Press down on the bottom of the cover to align it with the screw holes. Then tighten the screws to secure the cover. The DTS is available in two versions. For wireless version, remove the dust cover from the DTS port and insert the DTS into the DTS terminal. There will be a click sound when it is plugged in correctly. For the wired version, first, disassemble the DTS components sequentially. Thread and tighten the Ethernet cable through each component. Then, remove the dust cover from the DTS port and insert the DTS into the DTS terminal. There will be a click sound when it is plugged in correctly. Finally, we power on the system. If the inverter is connected to the battery, turn on the battery power switch and DC breaker. Turn on the AC breaker between the inverter and the grid. Rotate the DC switch to on if the inverter is connected to the PV strings. Check whether the inverter is operating properly through the inverter indicator status.
Open the installer app on your smartphone and log in. Then click on O&M at the bottom of the page and tap on Toolkit. The app will automatically scan for the Bluetooth of nearby devices. On the Bluetooth part, tap the DTS to be connected. On the device pairing page, enter the PIN code and then tap Confirm. Next is the commissioning process. Click on the Commissioning module in the Overview page to begin. Click on the Battery module to enter battery settings. Set the user's battery type, brand, and capacity, then click Save to return. Click on the Meter module, check the meter's location, and click Save to return. Click on the EV Charger module. Users can add an electric vehicle charger by clicking Auto Search or scanning the QR code on the label to identify the serial number. Click Save to return. After completing the above steps, click Next to proceed with additional settings. Click the drop-down arrow to select the grid profile for your region. Then click Next. Click the interactive arrow under Operating Mode to select the operating mode of inverter. Then click Next. Depending on whether the generator port is connected to an inverter or generator, select the appropriate option and click Next to enter the self-check module. Users can choose to complete the self-check or skip it as needed. To perform the self-check, click the Start Test button. Before proceeding, ensure all cables are correctly connected, switches are turned on, and configurations are accurate. To skip this step, click Next then click Confirm to proceed to the network configuration. Follow the prompts to configure the network, or skip this step if desired. If using DTS WLG3 Wi-Fi mode and network configuration is required, click the Wi-Fi option, select your router's Wi-Fi, enter the password, and click Finish. Once the network connection is successful, click Finish to finish the network setup. To skip this step, tap Skip Network Configuration. If using DTS WLG3 LAN mode, click Finish to finish the network setup. At this point, the S Miles Cloud configuration process is fully completed. That's all about this video. Thanks for watching.